welcome back to the channel. I'm Zedelix. Today I'm going to show you three Comfy UI workflows I've been using with Instant ID. So we're talking face identity, face swapping, and better control over the scene. These setups are built for quick testing and for understanding what's actually happening under the hood without drowning the graph in a hundred unnecessary nodes. One important thing before we start. Instant ID is not a cut and paste face tool. Think of it more like this. You give a reference image. It extracts a facial embedding, basically an identity signature, and then it guides either the generation or the edit so the face stays consistent. And depending on how you set up, you can get different behaviors. Generating a brand new image from scratch, transferring a specific style or look, or doing a face swap on a real photo while preserving as much of the original as possible. Let's start with the first workflow. This is the basic one. Here the input is just a single image, a photo of the person's face. And this is important. That image is not the one you're editing. It's only used as the identity reference. The structure is pretty straightforward. Load image. You load the face reference, ideally well lit and not too small. Face analysis. Comfy UI analyzes a face and builds a numerical representation of the identity. Load Instant ID Model plus Instant ID Control Net. These are the components that inject that identity into the diffusion process. Apply Instant ID. This is the key node. It's where the identity actually gets attached to the model. And then you've got the standard generation block, K sampler and VA decode. This workflow is perfect for one main use case. I want to generate new images in different scenes, but keep the same consistent face. Quick practical tip. If you want strong identity consistency without weird artifacts, start with an instant ID weight around 0.7 to 0.85 and don't push CFG too high. A common mistake is cranking CFG up and then the model starts reinventing details, which usually means more distortion and more artifacts. Now let's jump straight into the second workflow, the most interesting one because it's what most people actually mean when they say face swap. The goal here is keep the photo almost identical, same body, same outfit, same background, and change mainly the face. And the trick is not more power. The trick is the method. This workflow needs to run in IMG to IMG or in paint mode. So the pipeline looks like this. First, you load a target photo. This is the image you want to preserve. Then you pass it through VA encode to get your starting latent. In the case sampler, you use a low to noise, usually around 0.25 to 0.45. The higher you go, the more comfy UI starts reinventing clothing, colors, and lighting. Then you add depth control. You use a depth control net to keep geometry, volume, and overall structure consistent. This helps avoid melting facial features. And it also reduces the chance of body or proportions shifting too much. And finally, you apply Instant ID to enforce the face identity. A few practical tips for clean results. Keep the prompt minimal. If you over-describe the scene, the model takes as permission to redesign everything. Keep the noise low, seriously. If the shirt color changes or the lighting shifts, your denoise is too high. If you want to be sure you don't modify anything other than the face, leave the noise at one. You can paint a guide and facilitate the face swap. Use the mask and cover by coloring and covering the face you want to replace with black, as we saw previously, so that the model will only modify the selected area. The third workflow adds a really useful piece. Style. Here you work with two references, one for identity and one for style or composition. The core idea is simple. Instant ID locks in who the person is. IP adapter, your style reference, pushes how the scene looks, colors, lighting, mood, even the overall photographic feel. In terms of blocks, you keep the entire Instant ID section we covered in the first workflow. Then you add a visual block, low clip vision plus IP adapter. Clip vision is the image encoder that turns your style reference into a visual embedding. And IP adapter uses that embedding to guide the generation. The golden rule here is 
separate identity, and style. If you crank the style weight too high, you'll start losing identity. If you push instant ID too hard, identity will be great, but the style influence becomes barely noticeable. My usual starting point is strong identity, medium style, and then I balance from there depending on what I'm going for. Quick useful note. If you ever see an error like missing clip vision model or ComfyUI asks you for a safe and file, it's because ComfyUI doesn't load the entire hugging face folder the way Transformers does. It expects a single model file in side models and clip underscore vision folder. You can install everything you need for workflows using the ComfyUI manager. You can find all the information in the description. In the next videos, we'll see how to implement other techniques, such as managing poses, lighting textures, and much more. If you like my content, leave a like and follow the channel so you don't miss the latest news. See you soon.